Welcome everyone to this painting tutorial for my Greek hoplites. So these are the Greek hoplites which I picked up from Vitrix. They are the Athenians that have been repackaged and they are now selling but they are exactly the same sprues and really really nice models. As you can see here I have painted them in the Athenian style so it is white linen armour with blue on the tunics and of course bronze on the shields. I filmed this in my usual picture format so hopefully you'll follow along and see how I painted these guys up. So we start off the model by spraying it in grey. I use Halford's grey primer but you can use any grey primer that you may have. I find this works best for not only the whites and lighter colours but also it makes the blues a little bit more richer also. Starting off with the linen armour we use Army Painter's Filthy Cape and we just coat this as a first base coat on any anything that is going to be white so mainly the linen armor which is going to be the big focus of the Athenians. We then shade it all in with Nuln Oil from Citadel. Just completely wash over the entirety of the linen armor that you have already previously painted. Then we are going to be using Army Painter Weapon Bronze. So this is a new paint for me that I'm trying out and I actually think it is a really really nice bronze color for Greeks and you just want to paint this on all the areas that are going to be bronze so the helmet and also any bracelets that they have around their body. Then it's onto gunmetal from Vallejo Model Air. I find this to be one of the best darker silvers out of all the ranges and I just coat this on the tips of the spear so at the top and also at the bottom. And then we're moving on to Army Painter Leather Brown. So I paint this on all the straps that are going around the model and also any of the strappings that are on the spear. Moving on to Vallejo Game Colour Charred Brown, we paint the actual shaft of the spear in this colour and also the sandals that are on their feet. And then we shade everything that we have just previously painted with Agrax Earthshade. You might get some of this on the Nuln Oil areas, but believe me, it won't actually matter because we're going to be going over these areas in a bit anyway. Just make sure you get it over the entirety of the bronze and the spear shaft, all the silvers, make sure it gets everywhere. Then we're moving on to the layout model colour Prussian Blue and I actually really do love this very dark, rich, vibrant blue. Just coat it on any of the tunic areas that are sticking out from under the linen armour and also any of the feathers that are on top of the helmets. We give those blue areas then a coat of Citadel's Drakenhof Nightshade. And then we move on to Vallejo model colour white grey. So this is my perfect white colour. It's like an off-white light grey but it near enough looks white from a distance and I think it is spot on and it's absolutely amazing and I basically use this for any white areas that I need to be painted up because white can be very difficult to paint and this goes on really really nice on top of that non oil shaded filthy cape. Then we move back onto the Prussian blue and for the start we just coat that Prussian blue around the linen armour that is just slightly edged out so you can see it there in the crevices and creases these were coloured parts of the linen armour and the model itself it is great sculpting work from Vitrix to get these sticking out and making it very easier to paint so just put that Prussian blue all over those areas it's not hard and takes about two minutes to do. Then we move on to Vallejo Model Colour Deep Sky Blue and this blue you just coat on all of the top areas of the previous Prussian blue that we used for the cloth and also the feathers. This is a great vibrant rich blue and it goes on top of that Drakenhof night shaded colour really well. Will take you probably two coats but believe me when I say it looks awesome. And that is the models fully finished then up to that point. How I proceeded from this point was half of the ones that I painted up I alternated between the 
sky blue and the Prussian blue on the linen armour. And then I just did a second coat on the cloth that was already previously done Prussian blue, just highlighted up that Prussian blue again. And what that does is it means that some of your warriors will have the light on the cloth and the dark on the linen armor, and some will have the dark on the cloth and the light on the linen armor. And it's just a nice different effect that you can do to change up the paint job slightly. Moving on to Army Painters Tanned Flesh. I just coat this all over any of the flesh areas that are on the model left at this point. And you can see on this picture here where I have the Prussian blue on the cloth and the sky blue on the linen armor. And then we're gonna give the skin a Reutland Flesh Shade Wash. Just coat it over all the skin areas, making sure not to get it on any of the white because you will have to touch that up again later on. Then it's on to Army Painters Barbarian Flesh and this is just your extra highlight to go over any of the raised areas, leaving the wash in the recesses. Necromancer Cloak is last up and I basically use Necromancer Cloak on any of the beards and hair that some of the models might have. These are from the Mediterranean after all so their hair will be a lot darker. And that is what they look like when they are fully finished to this point. As you can see, some of them are very different. Some of them have the dark blue and light linen armor, and some have the light and dark blue linen armor. Some of them also have the dark blue feathers. Time to add the shields next though. And I sprayed these black while they're still on the sprue because I felt that would be the easiest way to actually paint the shields. And also I thought the black would have given that weapon bronze a darker tone. In all honesty, I think I made a mistake. I wish I had sprayed them gray and I would recommend if you are following this tutorial to spray them gray instead because it took about three or four coats of that weapon bronze when working on them from a black area. And there they are all painted up in the weapon bronze. I just coated the entirety of the weapon bronze. As I say, I did around about four coats, I think, and they're still not great as you can see. Like I would say, go grey with your spray. All you have to do next though is wash it with Agrax Earthshade from Citadel and this is what it looks like front and back. I will say at this point that if you are going to add shield transfers to your models to add them here because it will be a lot easier to add the shield transfers at this point. I myself have not gone for shield transfers because they are based on the movie 300 which we all know is not the most historically accurate film in the world but it's what I wanted with my Spartans and Athenians to be based on both the movies 300 and Rise of an Empire, the sequel. So I went for just having them as plain shields because in the movies they are plain shields. And there we have them fully finished as you saw at the beginning there. I really like these models. I think they're, they look amazing. I just can't fault them. They are great to paint and I'm gonna be trying the contrast paint range in the next video. Please let me know if you like this tutorial though in the comments section below, and I shall see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.